Hi, how's it going? This is Gray, and this is the Gray Podcast, episode number 17, with Paul Dinan. And Paul explains everything you need to know about Bitcoin, at least just to understand and get started. And uh, yeah, and 17 is a prime number. So you probably have heard or seen or read something about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is nothing than a currency, really. But it seems to be complicated uh, as it appears out there because there isn't too much information or the usage of it isn't as big. So it's kind of like something that you just familiar with but you don't really understand it. So that's why I had to meet Paul who uh, explained it to me because I was also in the same place of like, I know there's Bitcoin but I don't really understand what it is. I know it's a currency, it's money. But actually, in this podcast, you'll learn any, everything about Bitcoin that you'll be comfortable enough if you decide to jump into the browse to probably buy some Bitcoins or keep your money in Bitcoins or buy some stuff using Bitcoins because it's a really cool concept. Anyway, uh, right before we jump in, just want to say thanks to all the people that have subscribed since the, um, the last episode with Scott Keys. Uh, so many of you guys subscribed and the subscribers keep on coming every day uh, I have to say thanks to all of that and keep on coming for all of you who haven't subscribed yet so go on the website greatjabesi.com and subscribe right there or you can subscribe by iTunes or you can go on SoundCloud and just follow if you're on SoundCloud whatever works for you and leave some comments and I have to say as well that um, um, next week I have a podcast with uh, a sexologist or a sex therapist uh, just because I'm curious you know I don't like not to know so I thought a good idea to uh, see her and she's actually one of the best in South Africa in Africa entirely actually so if you have any questions that you think I should ask her some of you already sent me some questions after I posted on Facebook uh, and if you have anything else that you would want me to ask her uh, please just put them in the comments on this episode or on Facebook or wherever you're listening to this and I will actually take that into account. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the podcast with Paul Dinan. Cheers. You tell me, was this, this is happening? Yeah, yeah. Sure. All right. <laughs> How's it going, Gray? Uh, good, and you? Good. <laughs> now it feels like you're interviewing me now. Because... Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. So tell me about your mother. <laughs> ah, she is awesome. <laughs> okay, great. It's a good answer. Yeah. Cool. You have a radio background, right? Uh, no, but uh, my uh, my father told me that I, I had a great face for radio, so... And a great voice. Oh, aren't you sweet? Thank you. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, we're talking about Bitcoin. Yes, sir. Yeah, you want to explain a little bit about that? What, what exactly is it? Well, um... You know, I'll explain a little bit, maybe maybe a little bit of my background with it. Uh, I've been involved with, involved with Bitcoin for uh, a number of years now. Um, Bitcoin is, uh, in my opinion, probably the most important technology that will come along in uh, in my lifetime. Um, it is well. This this is a technical podcast, right? Yeah, it, it's life style everything so okay. it's not only for lifestyle. Yeah, all right. right. Well, I'll talk about fashion too. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about fashion? Anything. Um, yeah, well, Bitcoin is, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, a protocol. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a uh, it's a bit of software that's freely available that, that, uh, computers use to speak with each other. So to put it in comparison, it's, it's kind of like the web you've seen, you know, when you go to your, your, your browser, your URL bar, you see HTTP, that's hypertext transfer protocol is what that stands for. So... The web is a protocol that allows um, anyone in the world to be able to publish information to anyone else in the world uh, instantly uh, for nearly zero cost. Um, Bitcoin is ultimately also a protocol. It's a it's a peer to peer protocol uh, that allows anyone in the world to be able to transact value with anybody else in the world instantly for nearly zero cost. So that's kind of the best broad way to describe it. It's like the web, but for money. Okay. So how is it different from the real money that we use? Oh, oh, just to say, to make it clear, is it a currency? How can we 
how could you make someone who don't understand completely like myself well to, to understand you, it you know it's 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 sometimes tough we're, we're all stuck in this world of you know a currency is the rand a currency is the dollar it's something that a government says that this is what you're using to exchange value with but at the end of the day that's really all it is it's it's a way of denominating value so anything can really be a currency if somebody's willing to accept it and it at, as a form of exchange so you know if we've got you know puka shells on the beach um which at some point in the history of humanity somebody was using you know shells on a beach as currency so you know you would say okay this is you know uh this is worth x amount of shells this is worth y amount of shells blah 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 so so really anything can be a a, a currency as long as everybody agrees that 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 it has values or not even everybody as long as both parties involved in the transaction agree that it has value right. so in that sense anything can be a currency what makes bitcoin a better version of currency or, or i would say even a, even an advance in the technology of currency is that it's uh, uh more malleable um meaning you know, as opposed to, uh, 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 or more divisible. So as opposed to like gold, for example, um, you know, everybody kind of agrees that gold can be used to exchange value because for centuries we've all been fascinated by sparkly yellow precious metals, right? Yeah. But gold's actually a pretty crappy uh, currency because y y it comes in giant blocks um, you know, it's 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 hard to move around. Uh, it's hard for me to break off. Of, it's not it's not very divisible. It's hard for me to say, oh, okay, well, I only want I only want to exchange this much value with you. I'm not going to shave a little piece of my gold nugget off and mm -hmm. hand it to you. It's just not very practical. Um, it also can't be done over great space. It can't be sent around over, you know, unless you're person to person. So so gold actually kind of fails as as currency uh, in a couple of key ways. Um, uh, cash, uh, the RAN, pa paper notes, mm -hmm. that is a, 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 you know, that's a form of currency as well. That also kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's a better form of currency than gold, but it also fails on some other key points. It, it fails on, on, uh, on the uh, scarcity of it, right? So you've, there's always ways to make more rand. Somebody has power to make more rand. It's the same way with dollars. It's the same way with yen. It's the same with everything. Somebody can make more of it. So it's divisible. Um, outside of cash form, it's kind of easy to send around to each other. But it's also, but it, but it fails in the form of, of uh, it, it fails on the criteria of scarcity. So somebody can always make more rand. Somebody in the government, treasury department, whatever it is, can always just hit the print button and make more of it. So, so that kind of fails another key aspect of currency. Bitcoin uh, works, it, it, it covers a lot of the, the, the best benefits of, of uh, uh, the best features of currency. It can be sent anywhere in the world. It's infinitely divisible. I can buy a million rand worth of, of, of I can exchange a million rand worth of value in Bitcoin or I can exchange a millionth of a rand worth of value in Bitcoin uh, with anyone in the world. Um, it can it can be sent to them instantly. They can respend it instantly. Um, it just works a lot better on, on all of the different. Uh, uh, it, it does a better job of being a currency, I guess, is what, you could, what I'm stumbling through here. Sorry, I had a couple of drinks at lunch, um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's it's an advance in the in the technology of currency itself, which is what makes it really so exciting. Right. So yeah, as for currency, as you said, could be anything. Because I, I read a lot in other books that say a cigarette is a currency in prison. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. there's a lot of things that's currency in prison. <laughs> <Yeah. right? laughs> yeah. I, by the way, I think you do very well in there. <laughs> You'd be a wealthy man. You're very handsome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, okay. So just to break it down is... A currency, just like any other currency, but it's only available online. Uh, yeah. Well, I um, mean, it's not available online in the sense that it, it, it is electronic. Um, yeah. But the 
the reality is is that is that ninety nine percent of money is electronic. You know, when you you know we like to you know we have paper money and we like to think that that's a representation of you know that that that's somehow real money. But there's there's no bank at you know Ned Bank doesn't have a door with your name on it like uh, you know like the like the Hogwarts bank whatever that was <laughs> with your name on it that's got all of your you know your rand stacked up in there it's all electronic the vast 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 majority of money is is electronic and you can't see it and you can't touch it mm -hmm. um it's represented uh in the physical world with cash and there's actually um uh ways of representing bitcoin in the physical in the quote-unquote physical world with with cash there are actual physical bitcoins um, that have the values embedded in a private key within the coin. So there's examples of being able to do it with uh, doing quote-unquote physical cash with, with Bitcoin. But, I mean, you're, you're a technology guy, clearly. Um, I'm sure a lot of your listeners are technology people. I, I, don't, I don't see stuff online as not being part of the physical world it's very much part yeah. of the physical world it's, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it's electrons it's zeros yeah. and ones it's, it's as physical as anything else in this world 100% so so I think that's you know that's kind of a that's kind of a tough question to answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, just to make it clear then if I say Bitcoin is more like a universal currency. Uh, am I right? Because it has no, you don't have to exchange when you're going to a, ne to a new place, to a new country, or a new nation. Well, uh, y yes. Ultimately, I think that's the biggest value of, uh, of, of Bitcoin is, is that it can be used as a universal currency. It can be, you know, if, if people choose to accept it, it's, it's, uh, it can be be used anywhere right now you know we're still in the growing stages of that right now but it's increasingly easier to move your money around with bitcoin than it is with rand or yuan or whatever it is you're trying to use around mm -hmm. you have a lot more chance of going to the u.s and finding somebody who will sell you something with bitcoin than you will trying to buy something with rand frankly yeah yeah <laughs> indefinitely so, to say that the other ways that Bitcoin would, would say beats the typical currency that we use is also that you don't need all the bureaucracy to have an account or to keep it, right? Right. Well, that's, that's, that's a great question, actually. Um, so... The financial system, as it sits right now, is is enormously complicated. It's 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 bolted on top of you know its features, bolted on features, bolted on features, bolted on features, all to make this very archaic uh, system work. As an example, you go to the store, you want to buy a coffee, you pull out your credit card, you swipe that credit card. Um, that starts an enormously complex transaction, a series of events, really, that touches a dozen different people from the acquiring banks, the merchant banks, uh, the processors, all the way through Visa, MasterCard, you know, all the way through this process. Everybody takes their little piece out. It takes at least 24 hours to actually move that money from your bank account to the merchant's bank account at, at the very least 24 hours usually more than that uh, meaning move it to the point where that merchant can actually spend that money again and this enormous complex this enormously complex series of transactions uh, uh, also that at the end of the day you end up subtracting X from this column in a ledger and adding X to another column and another ledger, and that's mm -hmm. it. You know, it's subtract X from from here and add X to this, and that's it. That's all it does. But because this, because the financial system is so enormously uh, bloated and and has just been bolted onto over the years, it's it's very expensive. It's expensive for me to send money to friends in other countries or employees in other countries. If I want to send somebody. 
a PayPal from the United States to here. They, maybe they did some work for me. Maybe they sold me some sort of good, whatever it is. Uh, you know, it ends up costing for under $1,000. It ends up costing, works out to about 15% of the total transaction. Yep. I mean, I work online, so I deal with a lot of that bullshit. You know exactly how yeah, this is, yeah, right? Yeah. So so certainly for, it, it makes it even more, you know, it's, it's even more difficult for smaller transactions because the percentage is so, is, high, yeah. is so high. So yeah, so you end up spending, you know, if you try and send $100 to somebody uh, across an ocean or in another country, uh, it's, you, you're going you're gonna to put aside 15 to 20% of that, just goes into fees to make that transaction possible. Yeah, which is wild when you when you really think about it, especially in a day and age where, you know, we can talk to our friends in other countries for free at any time of the day. Yeah, we can yeah. video chat with anyone we want anywhere in the world for free, mm-hmm. and to think that I can't send that person money <laughs> for free, then that's it's just, you know, it's it's uh, it's a it's sort of a when you start digesting it a little better, you you kind of realize how archaic the system is. Mm. So Bitcoin has been around since 2008. We actually just celebrated the uh, yesterday, I believe, the publication of the uh, the eighth anniversary of the Bitcoin white paper. So happy anniversary, <laughs> Bitcoin! <laughs> yeah. So why isn't it as popular as it should be if it's this breakthrough of a, a technology? Because if you look past all oh, the technologies that came through, when they're really that good. Like the Facebooks and all these g- kind of guys, they just become a boom and everybody starts to use them. Why is Bitcoin you know, becoming as big as that? What did you compare it to Facebook? Yeah. Okay. I know it's about different metric, yeah. but it well, has- <laughs> I would say I would put it this way. I think I think really sweeping technologies. Facebook's great, but mm-hmm. Facebook is ultimately a part of a grander technology, which was mm-hmm. the web. Yeah. You know, and. Oh, sorry, maybe I should compare it to Uber, for example. Well, even Uber is another example of, of, of somebody pegging back. A, well, I guess all technology technically is piggybacking off of someone else's, you know, prior accomplishment. But I think, I think, uh, I think Bitcoin is, is going to take time to catch on. But, but you know, in the same way that, uh, that, that, that the web took time to catch on. Like we were all, I remember in 1996 trying to explain to, trying to explain the, the, the world wide web to someone. Mm. They'd look at it, you know, I'd say, okay, here's a screen. We're looking on these giant CRT monitors. <laughs> I'm like, all right, here's a screen, right? And there's uh, this is literally how I would explain it. There's a screen, there's words and pictures on that screen, right? You with me? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So there's words and pictures on the screen, right? Mm. And then you've got a mouse right over here. You, you know what yeah. a mouse? Okay, this is my, yeah. These, okay, so it's got the little pointy thing, right? So you move the pointer mm. over the words and the pictures, and you click on them, and it takes you to another screen with more words and pictures. Yeah. Ah, boom. <laughs> but still, do you, see, then, do, you, do you see the brilliance of it? Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah. Were, they were like, "No, I don't get it." They're like, yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it, but I don't get, get it. it. Yeah. Why the hell would I need something? Yeah. That was the first response. I realized, why the hell would I need something like that? Yeah. I'm like, well, you don't, but you will. Yeah. You know, and and it's very similar, I think, with with uh, with Bitcoin, with cryptocurrencies in general, is that a lot of people right now don't quite see the bigger picture because it takes time for something as um, would say revolutionary or I would say I would say I mean it, it's hard to get your mind around it in yeah. the same way that it's hard to get your mind around having a global publishing system yeah when w- there wasn't any when nothing like that existed yeah. right yeah. so and it's the it's the very same thing with with uh, with Bitcoin it's hard to get your your mind around the idea of a global uh, currency system or a global form of exchange but it's not going anywhere and it and it kind of keeps you know, just like the web, it, nobody was really sure what to do with it. We, but we ended up finding, figuring out ways that okay, this is how it could help people's lives a little bit. This is how it could, and it just kind of slowly wormed its way into everybody's life as as they as they came up with more and more valuable things to do with it. Things like Facebook, yeah, um, things like Uber, and um, and uh, and the same thing is already happening with Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and we'll continue to do so. So, for someone to get into Bitcoin, how 
how will you what what would be the first step to, for you to get involved in these bitcoins and to what extent can you can you use it well i i i, w- I would say the first step is i always tell everybody is you know get just get some bitcoin see how it works um it's so easy to you know bitcoin works where it, you have a you have a wallet um which is just a uh a public private key pair kind of thing uh, with an address you can create as many wallets as you want so literally just go and buy a rand worth of bitcoin mm. because you can do that you can yeah, because sure. one bitcoin is like about nine thousand rand so if you want to buy that's about ten thousand a day but yeah you yeah can, but that's again that's that's part of the beauty of it is you can, it is infinitely divisible so i can ah. i can i can i can send you point zero zero zero, zero. i can send you a hundredth of a rand worth of bitcoin i could send you a thousandth of a rand worth of bitcoin you know oh yeah that's kind of the and for for the same cost and the same you know the same speed of sending you a billion rand worth yeah. of bitcoin yeah because if you send me a billion rand through the bank they will want me to go there and explain <laughs> where it's coming from i would hope so probably yeah, they, yeah. i mean they have done it before for less so right well, they, it's well ridiculous. I, I don't know what you're involved in but it sounds good yeah. <laughs> No, just what normal. You, what, do you got, what do you got going on, Gray? <laughs> Are you dealing drugs on the side? No, no, no. This? Look, I work online sometimes. Right. Yeah, so you know this Elan's kind of website? Sure. Yeah. And then somebody pays me through PayPal or something, and then it's linked to my card, and a bit of money comes in. They're like, they give me a call like to explain where I got the money, and they have right. a lot of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know we could swear on this. Fucking sweet! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so how <laughs> if I opened the account with Coinbase, which is a wallet, right? Right. Yeah, so I was thinking of how to get a, uh, one Bitcoin to start, and it was like if one Bitcoin is to 10,000 rand to say. But now I know that I can get less. But now if I have a million of Bitcoin, <laughs> where, what am I going to do with it? If you had a million Bitcoins? Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, who is going to buy all of it? Because that's like ridiculous amount of money <clears throat> yes i mean what what, what what would anybody do with a ridiculous amount of money i guess two girls at the same time <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um <laughs> what did you do <laughs> yeah elliot what would you do <laughs> uh disappear forever and ever yeah you never <laughs> see me again you never see <laughs> that'd, be it. that'd be it maybe in the news yeah yeah that yeah. this guy i think i think i think we can all agree if we had you know a million bitcoins i i know i know that i would be circling somewhere just outside of the uh, Earth's lower orbit. Everybody's comfort zone. I mean, <laughs> I mean right outside of everybody's comfort zone. Well, that's a good answer. My natural life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's possibly one group that has a million. That's the, the guy who originally, uh, it's argued that the, the person or persons who originally um, uh, wrote the Bitcoin white paper uh, may have mined, at least the early few people may have mined uh, uh, a million bitcoins, uh, but a lot of them have moved since then. A lot of them have been sold. A lot of them got. I mean, I had friends who were over the moon when Bitcoin hit parity with the dollar, and they thought, "Oh my God, we're this is amazing! What a fluke! This is ridiculous!" So you know, these are guys who have, you know mined. And we're sitting with one of the guys here. Oh, I wish. <laughs> He'd be, I'd be, I'd be stroking his beard right now. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's a uh, what I, you know, what would I do with a ridiculous amount of money? I, I, I in would, Bitcoin, in in anything, I would be uh, probably doing stuff that I can't talk about or wouldn't talk about on any podcast Shooting or any radio. Yeah, I'd probably try and. Try and take you know see what a human tastes like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, ah man meat. <laughs> so, uh, you talk about mining, and first of all, how did you get involved in all this, and what? How come you're in Cape Town? Where uh, in the states are you from? Well, I'm I'm originally from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, home of Outkast, home of Coca Cola, Delta Ooh. Airlines, Georgia, Home Georgia. Depot, the Falcons, Michael Vick. Um, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter, yes. Mm. Less important. <laughs> Arguably the most important. Actually, he's pretty. Sick. 
Uh, I'm sorry, some, some British guys talking. Um, so I uh, I came I came uh, upon Bitcoin. I, I've kind of I've got a long history in uh, uh, selling stuff on the web. I, I I I bagged groceries for about three months when I was 14 years old, and then I went and got a job at Wang Laboratories, uh, working for Packard Bell Computers um, in 1995 when I was 15. Oh God, that's terrifying. And I've basically been doing computer stuff ever since then. Um, a lot of selling stuff online, and, and, and I felt like uh, it, it's really hard to sell stuff online because the web wasn't really made to sell stuff. Uh -huh. So that's not what it was built for. And um, so I just felt like I'd spend most of my life, or a large portion of my life, filling out paperwork for banks, yeah. uh, filling out paperwork for merchant accounts and sending uh, IDs okay. and all that. And it's just, it's a real... Yeah, it was it was a real hassle. So when I heard about Bitcoin from a uh, from a friend of mine who's uh, uh, a developer involved with it, I, it just immediately clicked with me. And um, the idea of not having to go to banks for permission to manage my money, the idea of you know being able to manage my own money, l legitimately manage my own money, and not trust someone else some IT department um, mm -hmm. or some government or some anything to be able to manage it it's it, it was it was immediately appealing to me so I started uh, I did some mining I've been involved in a number of uh, Bitcoin related projects and uh, I came out to Cape Town uh, about a year and a half ago uh, just to I've got a small digital agency out here and um, yeah, just doing a lot of uh, online, some development stuff, stuff like that. But I, all my clients pay me in Bitcoin at this point. Mm. Um, I uh, have employees here that I pay in Bitcoin. Oh, um, South Africans. South Africans that get paid in Bitcoin, yes. And uh, they were a little unsure about it at first, but now they love it. Mm. Uh, at least I hope they do. Well, they, they keep taking it from me. <laughs> they probably make more if... They had to get paid in rands, probably. Well, you know, calculated with the freedom of how they can keep the money and all the other stuff. Like yeah, that. well, I mean, most of them. So there's there's are there there are exchanges here in South Africa that let you just instantly exchange Bitcoin for rand. Oh, okay, good. So what most of them do is, you know, I'll send Bitcoin to their uh, to their accounts on the South African exchange, and then. Uh, you know, on, on payday, and they just immediately exchange it all into rand, and that gets and that that the exchange just EFTs it right into their bank account, so they can spend it. Right. And I've had a few of them ask, you know, whoa, should I maybe hold on to this? Should I, you know, is it going to go up? And you know, honestly, if anybody tells you they have the answer to that, they're lying to you, yeah, or trying to rob you, more likely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I knew whether it was going to go up or go down in the short term, I. I would be in that jet flying around, you know. <laughs> I'd, be in my, I'd be in my spaceship, but um, you know, I and I tell them, I, I tell them, you know, this is your paycheck, so you know, treat it like a paycheck, and and you know, you know, and and treat anything, anything that you want to leave in Bitcoin, consider it a very risky short-term investment. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you know, pay your bills with it. You, you're getting the money, and it's it's at that moment, it's 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 worth what it's worth. But it could go yeah. up, or but it could go down. And, and yeah. um, do you think there's a risk of Bitcoin as a system disappearing at one point? I, I think there's. I mean, I guess every, everything's everything's born to die. But I think in my lifetime, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I'm. There's other cryptocurrencies out there. Um, one of the amazing things about cryptocurrency technology in general is that you can set whatever rules you want in it. Mm. So Bitcoin has a set of rules, but you can also build, you know, you can build gray coin mm. really quickly and very easily, actually. I've built coins for, for other people around here, and, um, and uh, you can set whatever rules you want on it. You can set, oh, hey, one out of every... Uh, you know, one out of every ten gray coins that go through the network go to Gray's mom. Like that's it's that you know, yeah. It's, it's you can you set the rules. 
Uh, Bitcoin is, I don't think Bitcoin is going anywhere. Um, and that's because at this point there's a lot invested in it. There's, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, a good solid network effect behind it. Um, in the same way that it's unlikely that a social network similar to Facebook is going to come along and knock off Facebook at this point, mm -hmm. you know, same with WhatsApp, you know, there, there's a, there's a, it's not impossible, but it's in my opinion, very unlikely. Yeah. There's a network effect. There's a lot of money invested in the infrastructure and you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of money riding on it. So yeah. do you think so it's unregulated? There's no entity that owns the entire protocol to say Bitcoin. There's no company as Bitcoin, right? It's just, right. Just like money. It just, it just exists. Right. There's no, there's no, uh, there is no Bitcoin Inc. Yeah. that controls the the code of bitcoin it's all it's all open source you know that said it's still got the same issues that other open source software has where you know people have to agree to yeah. make certain changes and that can cause friction and it can cause you know pockets of power where, where some people have more power over what 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 will and won't happen with it uh, kind of the same way with linux yeah um but but no there's no there, there there's no one company that 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 owns that that owns bitcoin in the same way that there's no company that owns the web you can work on the web you can be facebook and work you know with the web technology yeah um and it's the same thing with bitcoin there's companies like bitx here there's like coinbase uh there's lots of companies out there now that that work with the bitcoin technology but none of them own bitcoin although they obviously have varying levels of power to influence yeah. influence it as far as regulation you know governments can regulate anything they want to regulate yeah. whether they can enforce those regulations is a whole nother thing you know yeah um, I can say nobody in South you know I'm in charge so nobody in South Africa is allowed to wear blue baseball caps now, whether I can enforce, you know, whether that's possible for me to be able to go around and make sure nobody wears blue baseball caps, mm -hmm. you know, that's, it's, it's unlikely. And so it's kind of the same thing with cryptocurrencies is, is, uh, it's very difficult to enforce. That said, they can regulate the companies that are involved with it. So, yeah. you know, exchanges and, and, and any company that wants to work with it will, 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 and, and is being regulated. So... Where do you go if things go wrong then? Because if something goes wrong with my money, I'm going to go to the bank. Right. And with Bitcoin, what happens? Well, and that's, you know, that's the thing. So with Bitcoin, you are, at, at its core level, you, you're in charge of, of your own security with it, right? Mm -hmm. So like with Coinbase or uh, BitX here or Bitstamp or in any of those kind of web-based wallets, you're actually giving them control over that wallet. Okay. So if something happens, you have to go to them because they're the ones who ultimately have control over mm -hmm. your coins at the end of the day. Right. Uh, they give you a login, but if they take away the login, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. At its most core, f you know, feature though is that is that you don't have to do it that way. You can have a, a local Bitcoin wallet um, mm -hmm. running as a program on your laptop right there. You can have it on your phone and you can keep the actual uh, private key. Um, so ultimately you can keep the coins on that, you know, yeah. on your local machine and, and never have to worry about that. The flip side of that is you're then responsible for it. Yeah. So if, if you get hacked, yeah, you, yeah, you get hacked, you drop your, you know, phone into a pool, you, somebody steals your laptop, you leave it at a bus station, whatever happens, yeah. there's no one you can run to. So it's security versus convenience, which is, um, you know, it's a very common. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, but then at the same time. But, for, at least, but at least you have the choice in this case. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and I still think pe most people would prefer to have kind of an agent like Coinbase or, or these other guys, just like banks, because nobody, not everyone has the competence to run their own local software. To totally yeah, agree. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Um, and and that's why I think you're seeing a lot more popularity in, in the online, in the web wallets yeah. um, than you are in people writing new 
yeah local wallets and stuff so um there there's a lot of travelers on this podcast that you know they're traveling the world or they just came in cape town and out can they use bitcoin from europe or wherever you'd say and how can they do that yeah well there's uh you know again there's a, there's a lot of um There's a lot of merchants at this point that are accepting Bitcoin directly. If you're a traveler, if you travel a lot, uh, I've found particularly useful um, Expedia uh, accepts Bitcoin for um, for hotel reservations now. So I book all my hotels directly with Bitcoin through Expedia. I'm not getting paid for that. Maybe Gray will. Um, for airlines, there are a couple of uh, websites out there that will let you book um, flights directly with Bitcoin. Um, I forget the names of them right now off the top of my head. Well, I guess they're not going to pay you. Oh, um, cheapair.com I know lets you book it, book flights directly with Bitcoin. Uh, and then there's uh, a lot of intermediary options as well. Um, a lot of companies are starting to come out with uh, loadable debit cards that are attached to Bitcoin wallets. So... It's kind of like a bridge between Bitcoin and the legacy financial system, which sounds kind of obnoxious to say, but can't think of a better way to say it. Um, and that allows uh, that allows you to spend your Bitcoin value anywhere that uh, accepts Visa, Mastercard. Yeah. So, and I have I have a I have a couple of those, and those are yeah yeah you showed me once. Yeah. So a way could someone get that kind of card because you say that the one you use you can draw money from any kind of atm yeah or buy anything just like using the normal debit card from the bank correct yeah uh well coinbase has one um i'm actually working on a site right now called uh, uh, uh bitcoincards.net where we're doing reviews of all of these uh, uh different cards we've ordered about a dozen of them now So we're reviewing all the cards, and you can read up and see which one works best for you. And and um, there's little differences between them. Um, you know, some of them are denominated in different currencies. Some of them are only available in different in you know different countries. Um, some of them have different fees and costs. So we kind of break all of those down and mm. and help you figure out which one is best. Yeah, cool. For the people listening, I'll definitely put it in the yeah. show notes. Bitcoincards.net. Yeah. <laughs> I will shout it louder. Yeah. And the, to, to get it in South Africa, could you get something like that here? Yeah, I don't. As far as I know, there's no companies, there's nobody doing loadable debit cards at all in RAND, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong. But uh, there's definitely, doesn't appear to be anybody uh, doing loadable debit cards in RAND attached to Bitcoin wallets. But you can have some of these companies will, most of these companies will ship to uh, South Africa, um, especially the European ones. So the card will, the card might ostensibly be denominated in euros or in dollars. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really just denominated in Bitcoin. Mm. So. Right. So I think it works for if... I'll give you an example. If you don't want to keep your, if you live in South Africa, it means you have to keep your money in rands, right? Except you have too much money, then you have this foreign, ex foreign currency account. Right. Yeah. But if you want to keep U.S. dollars here, it's just not possible because they're not going to give you unless you show them a flight ticket that you live in the country. Right. Yeah. So I think with Bitcoin you could do that because you have a stable currency. So if I go to the United States today with my Bitcoin, nothing is going to change. Well, it'll be whatever the price of Bitcoin is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I, I mean, I keep my Bitcoins. I don't have to make the exchanges in or whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's 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 a, and there's still some hurdles to that to you being able to do that right now because not everybody will take Bitcoin directly. Oh yeah, sure. But as opposed to four or five years ago it the, the difference is enormous the fact that we're even having this conversation about it yeah is is amazing to me because i i mean i would i remember trying to pay for airbnbs and and rentals you know four or five years ago and i would try and explain bitcoin and mm. they looked at me like i was a total asshole <laughs> <laughs> which is not which is not necessarily untrue but at least not <laughs> but it wasn't not for the reason that they thought i was an asshole right Did you pay for this hotel uh, with Bitcoin? <coughs> I paid for a lot of things in Bitcoin. I managed to convince a lot of people to do it. Um, this hotel? Did you pay? Oh, no, no, not, not this hotel. No, oh, okay. no. Um, 
but uh, we're not gonna mention the name because they're not gonna pay me for it. So. Oh yeah, not to worry about it. Not gonna, <laughs> people are gonna pay. I don't. I don't need them knocking down my doors here either. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I pay for. I mean, I remember, you know, I used to just give bitcoins away to people just to show them how it works, and um, because that, that's that's really the best way to to start to see how amazing it is is mm. to just get some bitcoin like it doesn't have to be a bitcoin mm -hmm. but just get some bitcoin whether it's a you know a, a point zero 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 one bitcoin whatever it is and just start sending it around open up three or four different wallets and just start moving it around and watch your money go from this completely unrelated place to another completely unrelated place and watch it just send it around and instantly and then and, 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 and have it you know have you be able to spend it immediately and, and it's it's really it's mind-blowing once you once you kind of do that and just to make it clear there's no transaction of course uh well there there are there are fees involved with it but they are are generally very 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 small so yeah. there's um you know there is a process it's it gets pretty technical and i'm happy to do it but i don't want to put all your listeners to to sleep mm. um there is a process called mining, which serves to verify transactions, the uh, the quality of transactions on the uh, on the network, and these miners do charge fees for transactions. Generally speaking, it's I think right now it's like four cents, mm. maybe maybe it's four to eight cents. I forget which, I forget where it's at at the moment, but that's for a transaction. As opposed to, so it's not percentage bears. It's no, it's it's oh. yeah, it's just a it's a it's a usually a, a, a flat fee that goes to the network. And you don't even have to send it. You can actually send it out for zero, but it might take longer for your transaction to go through. Okay. So for best results, you send a small transaction fee along with your transaction, and it, you know you'll the, the transaction will have been done within you know, usually yeah. 10, 10 to thirty minutes. So, but that's you know again you can send a billion rand worth of Bitcoin for yeah. an eight cent transaction fee, or I can oh. send you know a rand worth of Bitcoin for Great. an eight cent transaction fee. So you have used the word cryptocurrency a lot, which what Bitcoin Bitcoin is. Could you just explain to the listeners? Yeah, cryptocurrency. The term cryptocurrency is kind of a uh, description of this a broader um, a broader ecosystem of digital currencies that are fundamentally based on cryptography mm. uh, public private keys so or asynchronous encryption so you know, since Bitcoin was open source um, uh, a lot it, was, it makes it very easy to just fork it and create your own cryptocurrency yeah, yeah. So the kind of crypt cryptocurrency is just sort of the term for all of them so there's at this point there's thousands and thousands of people out there making various cryptocurrencies um, the vast majority of them have very are a very questionable value but then again then again at the end of the day if you can convince something that something's convince somebody that something's got value then they'll then it's got value that's what money is, right yeah that's that's yeah. all it is but um, but yeah so cryptocurrency is just sort of the term for this broader ecosystem this broader ecosystem of of uh, digital currencies. Uh, now, just to go off topic a little bit, <coughs> why a is the finder of Bitcoin a mystery? Um, well, that's not exactly off topic. That's, I think it's pretty pertinent. Uh, you know, that's a that's a question for the ages. Somebody out there knows who he is. I'm not the or she is or they are. Um, I'm not, I'm certainly not the guy who knows. Um, <laughs> But um, I, I think maybe this person's reason for doing it was, you know, I, I hate to speculate on anyone else's reasons for anything, but I, I, I think they, they, they kind of maybe didn't want their personality conflated with the idea itself. You know, it's a really good idea, but it kind of needs to stand on its own and, and, and it and it can be 
it, it can be influenced by oh well this this is the guy who made it therefore this is the, this 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 I see what you mean yeah it's gonna um, make sense yeah. yeah furthermore it's it's pretty well known at this point since he was one of the since he was the first miner and him and just a small group of people were 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 mining bitcoins at a very early stage and you know they're probably sitting on quite a bit of bitcoin and um, I you know I, I personally wouldn't want anyone to know that I was. Mm-hmm. I was worth many millions of um, malleable, pseudonymous, easily transferable, uh, you know, universal cash units. Yeah, <laughs> like, that would be. The first point is more appealing to me, though. It's like if he had to come out as someone else, then we would be looking at him like, oh, the Zuckerberg of Bitcoin. Right. But now it sounds just like an alternative. You see all these monetary system going on but then there's an alternative a better system that's just right there then right. you can figure it out on your own yeah i think it i think it kind of lets i like it because i think i think it kind of lets the it lets the idea speak for itself mm. is speak on its own merit rather than being belonging to right rather yeah. Yeah, rather than being like muddied by the in you know potential intentions of the creator of it yeah, you know? yeah so we can just say look this is what it is who cares what this person did at this point you know 99 percent of the code that he wrote is gone yeah sure it's been rewritten by by other people so there's no back door in it that this guy's gonna like guy or girl or whatever is gonna pull the rug out from underneath the whole system it's it's just you know it's I think one day it'll come to light who this person was, and I and I hope and I think that when when it does come to light that this guy probably deserves a Nobel Prize. Oh yeah, I'm just not sure. sure if it's in economics or technology <laughs> or what it is. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know where the prize should go, mm. but um, but uh, but I think it's a it's a, it's a really you know it's, it's 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 clearly something amazing that this person did. So say someone had just come from uh, from Europe. They're now all wherever, and they're now in Cape Town. They got bitcoins with them, and now they want to exchange money. They want to have cash. What would they do? Uh, they want rand. Well, if they again, if they have it on, I think the easiest way right now is with the debit cards. Um, so if they have a debit card, they go to an ATM machine and pull the money out. Yeah. Um, if they, there are uh, uh, again, there's exchanges here that will let you uh, uh, deposit. Uh, Exchange Bitcoin on them and deposit it directly, EFT it directly into your bank account here. Um, there's also local Bitcoin traders. Uh, if you want to get real down and dirty and meet the people, you know, you uh, you can go on any of, of, of like the big uh, Bitcoin meetups or Bitcoin, you know, South African Bitcoin meetups or South African uh, 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 Bitcoin Facebook Facebook groups and find somebody who will usually meet up with you and just sell you brand cash in person in exchange for Bitcoin. All right. So feels like a drug deal going on. There. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, well, then, yeah. You know, it's just like okay, person I, to person. I'm not saying drug deals aren't cool either. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so if if you go to the States, then I, I suppose there's so much you can do as compared to South Africa because I heard there's other merchants who accept Bitcoin as a currency yeah there's directly there's, there's probably more but I bet I, I, I'm surprised by how many places will take Bitcoin directly here so uh, pay fast you, you know pay fast yeah, I use pay fast yeah. okay well so pay fast uh, uh, has an option for accepting Bitcoin yeah through the BitX exchange so any merchant that uses pay fast can also choose to accept Bitcoin some of them do I know take a lot takes Bitcoin I buy I buy everything off of take a lot everything that I can off of take, take a lot, lot takes Bitcoin take a lot takes Bitcoin get in there right now ah yeah, yeah that sounds really cool they kind of have it hidden a little bit so you have to select pay fast yeah the pay fast option and then it gives you the option of uh, of buying directly with Bitcoin cool so. I like take a lot a lot I bought all these microphones through them so there you go I should have paid with Bitcoin there you go but then if you okay what did you say is very safe as to a volatility or the currency to keep your money in rand or in Bitcoin in U.S. dollars. Oh uh, well, you know the, the world we live in. The U.S. dollar is the global currency, right? So, you know, 
things will kind of go up and down with that. Mm -hmm. But um, and and I, and you definitely make no bones about it. Bitcoin, as far as value, is incredibly volatile mm. um, because it's still relative to most global currencies. It's very thinly traded. Yeah. Um, you know, the more the more people who are trading it, the the, the greater volume of trades happening, the greater usage cases for it, the, the more it'll, the, the less volatile it'll be. Um, that said, and I don't like to talk about the value too much because the value of it is really a separate conversation from the actual from the technology of it. Um, that they, they sort of they sort of exist independently of each other for the most part. Mm -hmm. you know, but but that said, since you know, in the five years, the six years now, the almost six years that Bitcoin's been around, um, you know, the value of it is is against dollars and against rand and against every the, every other currency has gone up significantly. Yeah. Um, so, I think on, on a personal level, I think long term Bitcoin is incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. It's worth it's worth a hell of a lot more than it is right now. Short term. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah sure. if, if you're smart enough to know what short-term currency movements are, then you're yeah. you're too smart to be having a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the market decides. The, yeah, the yeah, dynamics. yeah. If you, if you if you can tell me what you know what the value of the rand is going to be tomorrow, we can make a lot of money together. I could tell you. <laughs> um, so you have been keeping Bitcoin since the early stages, right? Yes. So you have been pretty keeping up then. If you has been going up as far as value for the last five. Yeah, years. I mean, I'm I'm not much of a trader. I tried to. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the testicular fortitude to mm. be trading, to to do day trading of anything really. So you know, I use it as a very volatile savings account. Mm. Oh, but if you save in Bitcoin, it also just means you've been good for the last couple of years. It's been okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. So, speaking of the meetups where people could go as far as Cape Town or South Africa to learn more or engage or trade mm -hmm. in this ecosystem, how, how does it happen? Because I see a lot of those on Facebook. Yeah. There's one that says, look, Bitcoin billionaires. Yeah, I, I yeah, told you yeah. last time and it says bullshit. Yeah, look, like anyone, anyone who's trying to sell you something with it, ignore them. Like, and, and yeah. anytime you see get rich with Bitcoin, you know, here's how you, and really anytime you see how to get rich with anything, just realize that somebody's trying to, trying to fuck you. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, yeah, anytime there's, there's a couple of good, uh, 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 there's, there's some, there's some real, there's actually a really great Bitcoin community in, uh, and, and Ethereum community in Cape Town. And, um, they have the, the main Bitcoin meetup, I think it's called. Yeah, Bitcoin Cape Town. I don't know. I'll send it to you. Uh, on on meetup.com? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's um, Bitcoin Cape Town. Yeah, I yeah. know that. Okay, yeah. yeah. That, the big one, that's great. You'll learn a lot by going to those. Um, mm -hmm. The Ethereum group, the, uh, the Ethereum uh, group is really good. Ethereum is another um, cryptocurrency. Right. Um, they're really good. Uh, there's, uh, I know there's a company here called uh, Blockchain Academy. Right. Um, and they do classes for Bitcoin stuff. So there's, you know, that's legit. Um, but yeah, anytime you're like, join the, anytime you see, there, there's one that says like, join the Bitcoin club and yeah. learn how to invest in a mine. And it's like, shut up, do not, just don't, don't let somebody take your money like that. Uh, you're, you're better than that. Yeah, yeah. But if I want a Bitcoin, well, I wouldn't probably buy, buy a Bitcoin. That's a lot of money. But if I want some Bitcoins, what I would do with my Coinbase is just have to use my bank card, my debit card, or how does it work? Well, Coinbase, um, you know, again with all of these web wallets and exchanges, these are where these, these are where governments are regulating cryptocurrencies because ah. they can't regulate the transaction of it between you yeah. and me because it's basically cash. But what they can do is regulate the exchanges. So, Coinbase is a very popular, probably the most popular uh, U.S. based. Uh, Bitcoin exchange. They're also in a lot of countries in Europe as well. They may not allow you to actually buy uh, unless you have a U.S. bank account, which I don't know. I don't know what your setup is. No, my setup is shit. Okay. Well, <laughs> South Africa. All right. Well, in South Africa, I know for sure uh, Bidex is probably the most um, uh, Bidex.co.za is uh, probably the most uh, uh, 
legit company, uh, Bitcoin company there is here. There's real smart guys working there. A lot of them are at those Bitcoin meetups. Mm. Um, they have an exchange and it's very professional. They have a great app. That's the one I use. And, um, you know, you can go into there and, 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 you know, you have to give them a little bit of paperwork, your, you know, copy of your South African ID and, and, um, proof of residence, I believe. Mm. And within a few hours you can, uh, buy Bitcoin directly from your bank accounts. You can just EFT right. any amount in, buy Bitcoin, and then there you, and then, and then you're in the, B, the then you're in the ecosystem, you know, then you're sure. in the Bitcoin world and you can mm. send it around to anywhere you want, but it's, you know, the, the tricky part is bridging the gap. Mm. So, you know, the, the tricky part is always bridging the gap between the legacy financial system and the Bitcoin system. So. Yeah, sure. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, so with all your Bitcoin, your money in Bitcoins, how do you spend your time in Cape Town? Where do you go? Oh, cocaine and hookers, no. Um, <laughs> uh, <Sure. laughs> well, you know, I kind of live off of Long Street here, and it's... Uh, it's it's great. So I, I really like this. I'm, I'm a city person. Mm. So as, as even though Cape Town is the most beautiful city I've ever seen in my life, it is. I hate nature. Oh. Don't care for it. Birds, sunshine, <laughs> fuck it all. Don't give a damn. Like put me in a city and just let me see nothing but concrete and glass, and I'm totally happy with that. But even I like begrudgingly. I'm over. I'm overwhelmed by the beauty of Cape Town. So, so uh, that said, I still like to be able to walk around in like kind of a city sort of environment. And mm. so, kind of right here in you know Long Street, but it's a good area for me. You got Bree Street right up there. There's a bunch of nice bars. Um, there's a Jade Lounge, which is a lot of fun over in Greenpoint. Mm. Um, there's a Beer House, which I just finished having some drinks at mm -hmm. um yeah so there's a lot of places yeah jade's my favorite though <laughs> yeah yeah it's great I mavericks doesn't bitcoin. accept bitcoin yet it doesn't mavericks does not accept bitcoin now that sucks because they should be the first <laughs> ones to <laughs> for those who are listening the, uh, mavericks <laughs> is, is a strip club in cape town ah, it's like yeah. the biggest oh. here right oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's like a proper vegas style uh, yeah yeah Circle here. It's where you, where you go to meet your next uh, Hungarian ex-wife. Oh, <laughs> you met your ex-wife there? Oh God, I, I met a few of them there. Oh, okay, yeah, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's probably that's why they exes. Maybe. But yeah, you know, look, we all, we all, we all, we all make mistakes in this world. Some, yeah, sure. some of us have to bite the electric pellet a few times. Do you know that it's actually an electric pipe? What's that? I'm saying you have to bite it sometimes to know that it's an electric. Yeah, pipe. exactly. You gotta sometimes you gotta put your hand on the stove. Yeah. yeah. What about you? You married? What's going on with you? Oh, no. Not married. Uh -huh. And single guy. Happy. Just single dude? Just kicking around Cape Town? 100%, man. Happy where do you, where single do you guy? go to party? I want, I, want, I want some advice from you. Um, I'm not too much of a party guy. Okay. Yeah, I like chilling the most. In the evening, of course. Uh, having a few drinks after a long day of work with friends. So I like Clue Street the most. Yeah, Clue Street's great, Clue right? I like yours truly. Yours truly? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And there's Ahsoka also on, on Clue. It's kind of great. What, Ahsoka? Yeah. Yeah, Ahsoka's like, great. You, you have, oh, yeah, you I love Ahsoka. I love yeah. Yours truly, I love it, but uh, uh, but uh, I feel like uh, I feel like I feel like the creepy grandfather there. Yeah, I'm oh, like, okay. I'm, I'm, well, I'm well into my 30s now. I know, I know, you know, I know it doesn't look like it with this full head of hair, but, um, but uh, yeah, it's a really fun... <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun place. crowd. <laughs> but they like they would probably like a guy with Bitcoin. You know? Well, let's hope so. <laughs> from your from your lips to God's ears, Gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then party was just random. You know, I really don't care that much. Okay. There isn't a party place that I really like in Cape Town. No. The only place that I feel like party was good was in Durban at a place called Cool Runnings. You must cool Runnings, like yeah. the TV, like the movie. Mm. You must check it out when you go there. Okay. It's incredibly great. Yeah. All right, I'll check that out. Yeah. So you said something about, of course, Bitcoin right now is very related to when some people hear about Bitcoin, they think of drugs or this kind of thing going on online, which is true also. But you said your response to that was the last time we spoke, the first time we met, you joked something about 
yeah, even the actual currency that we use, the league. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the current currency has more trades of those kinds. Oh, sure. More illegal stuff gets done with cash than Bitcoin yeah. by a long shot, yeah. by, a, by, a, by a Christian mile, as they oh, say. Oh, yeah. A billion and, to the power of twenty. <laughs> oh yeah, and and you know, and and even more to that point, you know, it's uh, you know, people with nothing to lose tend to be the first one to uh, uh, you know jump on new technologies. It's the yeah. reason. Sure. Definitely. You know, we would we wouldn't have had VCRs without pornography, mm. and we probably wouldn't have had uh, a lot of web stuff without pornography as well. Sure. You know, so uh, you know, and 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 also. Again, it goes back to my web analogy. You know, I, I remember discussing it with people there, and, and all they knew of it, and all people knew of the web in 1996 was, oh, that's where you get child porn, right? Yeah. I'm like, well, exactly. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's no winning way for me to respond to that. No, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, there's, yeah. there's more to it than just child porn. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And I would say the same thing about Bitcoin. There's a lot more to it than than drugs, and and yeah, you know, cash. There's, there's been a lot more rolled up, uh, you know, hundred rand notes and. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, over a dirty toilet seat. And a, I don't. I don't, don't want to get too far into that. But yeah, a lot um, more. A lot more drugs with cash than with Bitcoin. Hundred percent. So, how does it feel for you to see those technologies coming in your lifetime, from an early stage, from where they actually start to seeing them becoming as bigger as they are now, like the way something that you saw at early stage, where nobody, <laughs> not a lot of people, could understand it to the point where it is now, where it's like. Well, if you're not using it, you're probably something wrong with you. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I, I try not to be one of those people who uh, gets pissed off because their favorite small indie band suddenly has a giant hit. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's exciting and it, and, it, and it validates my belief in it in the first place. So, I, you know, it just makes me feel even smarter. Woo hoo hoo. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I think it's great. And I think it's, uh, I think. You know, I think being able to look at stuff on, on a longer term, on a you know, a longer timeline like that helps you look towards the future for other stuff, and and helps you structure life a little bit better. You know, you, you, if you understand your place in time and history, and and, and and within a within the span of a certain technology, you know, yeah, you kind of you kind of know yourself a little bit better. Sure. You know a lot of loopholes going on that you can always swing around. I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there, yeah. There's that, and, and and yeah, and you you can you can look forward to other stuff, and then you can be you can realize when the next one comes along. Yeah, you know, sure. You'll, you'll be like, oh, I've seen this before. So, what are the other technologies that you think people should probably pay, or you were paying attention to, as you think in the next five or ten years will be as bigger than they seem right now? Uh, you know, I mean, grand sweeping technologies, it's, you know, it's hard to be a prognosticator for that kind of stuff. Sure. I think anything decentralized is, you know, clearly the pattern here. Um, decentralized systems work. And, uh, and any, in any way that we can, we can, we can, we can make a system that, that, that works without having to be reliant on any kind of central authority figure that I think that's you know I think it's I think it's and, and that that's the web that's the internet itself mm. you know that's Bitcoin you know so I always I've always kind of got an eye out for that that sort of thought process sure. you know, even with stuff like I mean even stuff with like stuff like BitTorrent mm. you know yeah I mean, BitTorrent is great yeah well BitTorrent's great you know what Bit, BitTorrent they've spent uh, God knows how many billions of dollars yeah. And had the influence of presidents and senators and congressmen and around the around the world. You know, Hollywood's been trying to break BitTorrent, sure. and they can't do it because it's a decentralized system. They, they, sure. they can't. You know, you you can't kill that which may, you know, lie forever dormant. So sure. or whatever the whatever that quote is, but. Um, so I hope to see more of that, and I, and I hope to see ultimately see all the technologies at least within my lifetime to make the world a smaller place. You know, it yeah. sounds cheesy, but I, you know, I've been traveling for five years and six years now, whatever it is, at least like nonstop out of a suitcase, and 
like my biggest takeaway from that is 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 uh, you know anyone under the age of 35 really mm. is pretty much the same damn person everyone in the world everywhere in the world you know, oh. I could I could I could pick you up by the head and and drop lift you into the middle of San Francisco yeah and you'd be fine you wouldn't be you, would, fine. Yeah. you wouldn't miss a beat though you yeah know, or, or into the middle of you know Panama City Panama and and you know what you would you would you would meet people. You would got you guys would have the same. Uh, you'd be laughing the same videos on YouTube. Yeah. You'd be coveting the same phones. You'd be you know listening to the same music, wearing very similar clothes. Like you would. You know, there's so many uh, shared cultural touchstones uh, as a result of the web. Yeah. Sure. Um, that it's made the world a smaller place, and, and with that in mind, I look forward to seeing what. You know, now, now that we've got these shared cultural touchstones with the web, let's let's have these shared, you know, uh, uh, business touchstones. Let's have these shared value touchstones for something right. like Bitcoin, <laughs> and let's see what that does. Makes the world even even super smaller. Yeah. If we could trade in the same currency, I mean, that would be like speaking the same language. You know? Well, if I can do business with you, here's yeah. the thing: if I can do business with you, even if I don't really fu- like you, even if I kind of think you're a fucking prick, yeah. I'm not going to get in a fight with you. Sure. I'm never going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to punch your lights out. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shoot you in the face (laughs) because we're doing business together and we're like, and that's, that's fine. I don't have to like you, Yeah. but like, we'll get along because, you know, we'll, we'll make it work. We're not going to go to war. Yeah. Sure. And, um, and I think, uh, you know, having the ability to be able to do business with people all over the world and and you're seeing it even with this freelance stuff, Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's neat being able to do business with people all over the world and you got to good skill set for being able to do that mm. you know I think you know it, it makes people understand each other more and, and you yeah. can't hate that which you understand and I know it's all kind of cheesy but I, I really do believe if you know if everybody's understands where the other person's coming from there's going to be less people trying to kick the shit out of each other sure sure uh, so if you had to lose everything that you own right now what did you do to get back to Keeping up with your lifestyle. I would sell my ass. <laughs> to? Anybody who would buy it. <laughs> um, you know, if you if you if you made money a few times if you made money a few times, you know, you can you can do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the older I get, the less concerned I am about some sort of idea of being outrageously wealthy will make me happy mm-hmm. um, I think at some point you realize that that uh, you know money 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 isn't happiness money is just the opportunity to find what makes you happy you know money's freedom to mm-hmm. find what makes you happy so if I got enough money to you know find the freedom you know, to, to have the freedom to be able to do things that make me happy, which right now means, you know, you know, living in Cape Town and being able to drink wherever I want and meeting mm-hmm. guys like you and, you know, eating pizza at yours truly or whatever it is. Sure. Um, then, then I'm pretty happy and I can get back to that pretty easily. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. And if you had to go back to the 18-year-old you, what would you tell him? <laughs> Fuck. Um... I'd say don't start smoking. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Everything else is, you know, everything else is you, you learn on the way. But, yeah. you know, don't, don't, don't smoke. Don't get anybody pregnant. I mean, I didn't, but, you know, don't smoke as far as I know. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's also cheesy. Do what makes you happy. That's, that's, really, that's really all anyone can. That's yeah. really all anyone can do. Some yeah. people are happy making money. Mm-hmm. And, God bless them. But sure. it's not the money making them happy. It's playing and winning like, the game. Yeah, it's know? more like a game, actually. Making yeah. money. It's a fun thing to do sometimes. Yeah, and if you're good at that, great. Awesome. But it's not really the money that's making you happy. Yeah, sure. It's knowing that you're good at this game. Of, yeah, uh, yeah. And the money is what lets you know whether you're winning or losing the game. It's more like playing football. The way I look at it is like you can be happy to win a trophy, but actually it's what's fun is to play the game. Even though you play to win, but it's just like... 
if you you know anything about soccer or football. Sure. Yeah, sure. If you're Lionel Messi, you make millions. Right. You play to win, but like, it's nothing more exciting than just to play itself because、right. they can play for you can play for free if you have to. You know, just put、right. it out with the game. But I, I think even I think even like Messi, like you know, he's got a he's got to play. You know, he's got to love the game to yeah, be able、sure. to, to be able to play it at that、mm. level, right? I mean, to be、yeah. a professional athlete, you gotta you know, at the moment you stop loving that game, then. Mm-hmm. Probably not gonna be very good at it anymore. Yeah, you play in the sports. <laughs> Me? Yeah.、Uh, I've been boxing at Pound for Pound Gym on、uh, Bree Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's.、Uh, I've been doing it for about seven months now. It's.、Uh, it's great. My.、Uh, I've got this Congolese coach who、mm. kicks the shit out of me three <laughs> times a week, and、um, and、uh, and it's a lot of fun. His his son's.、Uh, his son does fights around here. Emil, Emil Kalakuzi,、mm. and、um, yeah, when they're not when they're not fighting, they're they're, they're kicking the shit out of me, which is nice. <laughs> cool, it's fun. And music,、uh, what are you into? Considering you're from、uh, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia. Ad- Atlanta, yeah. yeah.、Uh, well, I love Outkast, ATL, Georgia, Andre 3000. Shout out to Public Housing. Sure.、Um, and then、uh, you know, I like good、oh. '70s funk, man. James Brown, like my go-to for anything, is like.、Mm. James Brown, Parliament Funkadelic, Loud Players, like Earth Wind Fire, like if I had to, if I had, if I had nothing else, if I could only have one album with me, it would be um, uh, James Brown,、uh, Live in Paris, seventy two, seventy four. I don't know what it was, but it's yeah, it's great stuff. Oh, cool, man! Last question.、Uh, Fire away. <laughs> have you lived in San Francisco before? Uh, I've never lived in San Francisco. No, I've, I've spent、okay. a lot of time there, but、okay. uh, it's a horrible place. Don't go. Really? <laughs> That's like my to-go place. Oh, really? In the rest of the world, yeah. No, it's cool. I'm not. I can't shit. You know what? Like the Bay Area is just weird, man. They always like they they all. I it's it's not really my scene. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm an East Coast person. You know,、mm-hmm. I, I lived in New York, and and there's always a little bit of. Intercity rivalries in the big cities in the、sure. U.S., which is I get why because New York is clearly the best.、Um, but、uh, but no, I, I like San Francisco. There's always some weird weird shit going on there that you just don't.、Uh, mm. It's a weird mix of people. I feel like you, when you, if you move to San Francisco, you're either moving there to ride the Google bus or throw rocks at the Google bus. Like yeah, always, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of one or the other. <laughs> yeah, sure. I like the culture there. You know, it'd be cool to live there for two years and. Probably you can look at the world in a whole different way. All right, better、I、better make、know. that money, Greg. <laughs> San Francisco ain't cheap, buddy. Oh、uh, yeah, I know that <laughs> for sure. I just got a mind out of bitcoins, probably too. To yes, to... yes, you do. Yeah, cool, man. It was nice chatting doing the podcast with you. Yeah, but this was a lot of fun. Thanks, yeah, dude. Yeah, sure.、Um, how do you pronounce the name?、Uh, Paul Paul Dinan, D I N I N. Okay, Paul Dinan. Or whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Okay, Paul、cool. works. All right, sure. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, Greg. Woo! Peace out. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And right before you go, just want to remind you: if this is your first time listening to this podcast, I say welcome. And just remember one more important thing before you leave: is subscribe to the podcast. So you can do that、uh, on iTunes or the podcast app. You can just search the Greg podcast and subscribe. Or from the website where you're listening to this、uh, to, uh, on GregJavis.com. On the right-hand side of the page, you will find a text box where it says "Subscribe to the podcast." You just put in your email address, and that means every single time that I release a new podcast, you'll be able to be notified or receive the podcast through your email address directly. Which means you don't have to go and search for it every single time that it's out. And remember to check out the rest of the episodes as well, the previous ones. Really cool guests there. And with that note, thanks again for listening. You can leave you know, some comments in the comment box on whatever platform you're listening to this on the podcast website or on iTunes, on Stitcher, wherever. Otherwise, have fun.、Uh, 